Welcome to Fugatti Cars. I thought I'd better do a proper introduction video for this, the latest project or member of the fleet depending on how you look at it because it's actually running tax and MOT'd. It's a 1980 Citroen GSA with the 1299cc four-cylinder air-cooled boxer engine in it. Uh, I hope that makes better sense this time Mr Chase Racer. Anyway, uh, I'll give you a quick tour of it. So the first thing to see is it looks strikingly like the CX that I owned previously for it was lost in a, a fire at the storage unit I had. It's pretty much exactly the same profile with a couple of slight exceptions. Firstly, the face of the car is obviously slightly narrower uh, and the front end seems a bit deeper but it does have a striking family resemblance to the CX and as we move around here you'll see that the rear window profile is completely different so a CX would have a dip in it, a sort of con, a sort of curve in it um, designed so that the water came off it as you were going along rather than needing a rear wiper uh, and additionally a CX would have a boot which would sit about here this car, however, has the practicality of a hatchback. Look at that, fantastic. Gives you cracking load space as you can see here. Now all these tools weren't in the vehicle when I picked it up from Tavistock or was it, oh I don't know, somewhere in Devon anyway. Um, I have been using it as a bit of a service barge to run around and help people. It's ideal for that kind of thing. Um, so. That's the outside of it. Again, similar lights to a CX. As you can see, this has had quite a bit of kissing and I'll probably need to get a new one of them. Anyway, on to the important stuff. We'll have a look in the inside of it. Right, first thing to notice, we've got what look like Morris Marina door handles, um, except they open at 90 degrees the way you'd expect. Excuse me, that's that's the door, not my bones for once. This is interesting. You've got the lock button for the door here and the release button here, which is different from the trigger that you'd have on a CX. Um, but the most discombobulating thing of all is this, the control panel. Now, most people would call it an instrument panel. It's anything but that. It's a completely different way of driving a car. So, where to start? Well, first of all, We've got a single spoke steering wheel here, um, which is directly connected without power assistance to the front wheels via a rack. And the reason that it doesn't have power uh, assistance is because when it was designed, this car has inboard front disc brakes. So the disc brakes sit pretty much in line with the back end of the gearbox um, where the drive shafts come through which means all the weight is concentrated in the centre of the car and all you've really got is the weight of the hub at the outside with the wheel on it. That makes it quite light, especially once you're up to speed, but it's very direct. And it also means you can do away with any need for power steering like the Dravi system when you would get in a CX. Quick word of notice. Um, the passenger really gets to control the temperature in this car because that's clearly on... The passenger side of the vehicle so you need to be in good uh, terms with your passenger and you've also got quite a vicious looking handbrake here which is nice and easy to operate um, and acts on the front wheels uh, on the inboard disc brakes we have a four speed gearbox with reverse here because this is a special which is the one of the lower models i think it might be the lowest and um, most other GSAs got a five speed box, but this one seems quite happy sitting cruising at the, the national maximum speed limit. Um, we've got a height controller down here, as you can see, slightly different from the CX insofar as this doesn't put it on its Nat King Cole. This is your standard ride height. Then you've got a slot here for slightly worse conditions, and then you've got the maximum extension up here. If we'd been uh, fluid enough with cash to be able to buy things we would have had a radio here as it is we've got an upside down snickers and a receipt um, there's also a wee tear on that interior panel there but what can you do it's a 38 year old car anyway 
back to the actual control panel, let's have a look at it. So at the top, we've got a whole selection of warning lights here. I'll just put on the ignition. There we go. Okay, so we've got choke here. That's the one that tells you everything is broken. This is a vacuum system, so there are two different colours of light here that come on dependent upon the load in the engine. This light represents your LHM, so that's the suspension and braking fluid that's used. Um, alternator and charge light for the battery. We've got a brake pad warning light here. A fuel light here. Uh, a light to tell you if there's any sort of feeling in the brake system. And an oil pressure light. And a temperature warning light. Now, as I said earlier in the video, this car has a four cylinder boxer air cooled engine. As far as I can ascertain, it's sort of halfway between something you'd find in a Beetle and someone sort of tack welding the crank together on two Citroen 2CV lumps. I don't know the etymology of it or where it comes from, but all I can tell you is having done nearly 600 miles in it, it's a cracking peach of an engine. Thrives and revs, pulls along beautifully and is quite happy um, sitting at sort of about 70, 65, 70 miles an hour, which is exactly what you want from a car if you're dri driving it up from Devon to north of Glasgow. Um, we've got a really posh clock here done by Jaeger. Um, I don't know if you can quite see, but the minute hand is broken on it, so it's always reading half past whenever. And you've also got the best feature in the car by far, which is a rotating drum speedo. So it rolls round like that, rather than being a gauge which revs. Um, that's really useful and quite intuitive to use once you get your head around what it's actually doing. Speaking about intuitive and easy to use once you get your head around it, we'll move on to these sort of control, control satellites. So the one on the left does everything that you need without taking your hand off the wheel so as you can see you can pretty much span everything here You've got your screen wash button at the top that's the wiper controls the indicators are here and they're not self cancelling you need to manually cancel them you've then got your side lights and um, dip beam and full beam which is controlled by the switch under here Again, it's one of these things, literally after about 10 or 15 miles, you'll have got your head round about it. This side has got hazard switch on it, um, fog light and heated rear windscreen. Fairly sensible. Doesn't make too much in the way of difficulty when it comes to driving. Um, in terms of the actual interior, as you can see, it's a most fetching palette of browns um, with some really... Can you hear that? Yeah, it's not the most robust of plastics. Although I will be honest and say that I think it stood up fairly well to its 38 years on this earth. Um, a bit of discoloration and stuff, but I'm hoping to be able to bring that back by doing some cleaning on it today. Interestingly, when I picked it up, we had a bang and a thunk from um, just underneath this passenger seat. Every time I went round the left-hand bend, Turned out the previous owner had left this bottle in it um, and it was rattling about and hitting off it. Unfortunately it was empty, which is rubbish, but I think it's quite a French approach to things. We've got a beautiful um, punctured headlining, which is kind of reminiscent of 1980s gym shorts with a really mad sort of striped pattern on it. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Um, other than that, Pretty much everything else is fairly sensible and normal. The sun visors, disappointingly, are just normal sun visors. They don't do anything super cool. Um, the one final thing to mention in this is because it's hydropneumatic, we do have the world's sharpest brake pedal. So literally this operates similar to the way that an HGV would do. HGV uses air to hold the brakes off. This car uses um, fluid to pressurise the brakes and as soon as you press that pedal, you release that presser, pressure and it starts to brake. That makes it very, very effective at braking and it takes a bit of getting used to in terms of being gentle with the pedal so that you don't put yourself or the passengers through the window. Speaking of the window, biggest bugbear in this car at the moment is the fact that someone has fitted it with 12 inch wipers. Now, 
I think, as far as I could find out, sort of 16 inch is the recommended size for this. So I need to get them change, changed PDQ. Anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, thanks very much for joining us on the tour of the GSA. I'm just away to go and start cleaning it now. Uh, and I'll hopefully be able to share a bit more with you. Maybe get an in-depth look at the engine on it shortly. Thanks, bye.